What's going on everybody? This is Sean of Ross Like Music. Today I want to talk about these two records right here. This is Mark to Clive Low Heritage Parts 1 and 2, released on rope dope Records in 2019. So originally I wanted to review these records way back when I first picked them up, like I think that was maybe in May or June or so. And around the time that I started listening to these records, I came up with this great idea of combining footage from me walking around Japan with my thoughts and opinions of these two records. Yeah. Yeah, that never happened. So I'm just doing a plain old dry review with this. I really do want to share my thoughts and opinions of these two records with you guys and let you know why I think they're worth checking out. And rather than continuously waiting for me to actually follow through on my supposedly amazing idea, I figured I'd just get th this review done and over with. So with that being said, yeah, let's talk about these two records. So for those of you who may not know who Mark to Clive Lowe is, he's half Japanese, half New Zealand, born in New Zealand, but now resides in Los Angeles and I think my first exposure to Mark to Clive Lowe was seeing several of his records right around the time that I started getting into electronic music all the way back to like 2004 2005 and my understanding of his music in those days was mostly sort of bugs in the attic or sort of four hero esque broken beat kind of stuff now me really not being into that kind of music at the time didn't really pay much attention to it but the name for whatever reason I think it was because of this record right here just the the style of it always stuck out in my head and for whatever reason even though I wasn't an avid listener of his music I did always remember the name Mark to Clive Lowe and then it seemed strangely within the last several years or so I kept seeing his name pop up over and over again whether it was with the release of his album Church that came out not too long ago as well as his name popping up on several tracks from uh release releases that I like. The track that he did with Detroit Swindle was one of my favorite house tracks of that year. And also he recently popped up on 14KT's album Power of Same. Although I sort of badmouthed that track when I first did my review of that record, I've actually come to really like that song and think that Mark to Clive Lowe's keyboard playing to that track really does add a lot of flavor to it. For whatever reason I neglected to mention that Mark to Clive Lowe is a pianist slash producer and he's most known for his very accomplished very skilled piano playing it pops up on pretty much every track that I've heard recently from Mark to Clive Lowe and my initial interest in these two records right here had mostly to do with the fact that I was really intrigued by the prospect of hearing a western take on traditional Japanese melodies and I think the first track that I remember hearing from this record may have been either o Oedo Nihon Bashi or Bushido 2 from Heritage Part 2. When I first heard that track, that's actually what sold me on picking this record up and figuring since this is a Part 2 record, I figured I might as well pick up Heritage as well. And I'm really glad that I did because these are two of my favorite records this year. I'd even go as far as to say that they may end up in the top slot of this year, but I'm still deciding on what record's gonna make the top slot this year. But these are definitely a contender as far as I'm concerned. If I were easily to sum up the sounds of both these records, I'd say it's tra 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 traditional Japanese music meets jazz, and that's pretty consistent across both records. I feel like this is definitely the more traditional of the two records, although it does have some synthesizer and electronic elements to it. It feels like they are just really little subtle touches, as opposed to heritage part two which has much more pronounced electronic elements although it's still pretty similar in sound to this record and what's really cool about both of these records is they take the foundation of a lot of traditional Japanese melodies that you'll hear even going as far as covering a traditional Japanese song in Akatambo or Red Dragonfly and doing an absolutely amazing job. All the musicianship on both of these records are top notch. These guys play with a veteran level of seasoned musicianship. They flow really nicely together. They play really nicely together. Every song on here has a great sense of dynamic, usually by setting the motif of the song, building up to a beautiful crescendo, cooling down again before building back up to it, and then 
trailing off. There's just this incredible fluidity with the way that these guys play. It's very smooth, it's very loose, which honestly ends up giving both of these records a rather outdoorsy, pastoral feel to them. These two records feel very atmospheric. As someone who's lived in Japan for 13 years, I gotta say, listening to these records really hits a sort of nostalgic bone in my body and really feel evocative of Japan. And the melodies on here feel very similar to a lot of Higashi Joe's work from his classic work on Studio Ghibli. They do a really wonderful job of sort of setting the mood and setting the atmosphere of the song. And then as the Japanese traditional melodies start to mesh, start to mix with some of the jazzier elements, they come together and make this really, really cool, unique and interesting sound that blends together and works way better than it has any right to. There's a very organic flow to every one of the songs on here. Everything is just so open, so fluid, so relaxed. And because of all the little subtle nuances with all the different instruments that pop up on this record, lots of sax, lots of flute, lots of little electronic synths and elements that pop up on here, as well as some top-notch drumming. So the, there's some really top-notch musicianship on here, some really cool mixes of traditional Japanese melodies as well as some impressive jazz improvisation that blends in with the Japanese melodies perfectly and honestly I don't know what else to say about these two records that really sort of sums up my feelings on these two guys if I really had any complaint about them I would say that it does get a little bit monotonous where some of the melodies start to blend together a little bit but it's not really a deal breaker to me because I still find myself enjoying these records immensely. I've been going back to them even more so when, than when I first bought them, and I have a feeling that I'm going to be going back to these records quite a bit from now, here on out. So yeah, I gotta say, Mark, Mark to Clive Low Heritage, parts one and two, easily two of my favorite records of 2019. So that's gonna be it for me today, guys. Thanks, as always, for watching. If you've listened to these two records, let me know what you thought about them down in the comments. If you wanna hear these two records for yourself, please head over to my WordPress or Steam It blog because that's where you can check out audio links to any of the records that I talk about on this channel. And as always, please head over to my Mixcloud so you can check out the Raw Select Music podcast, my more long-form conversation audio component of this YouTube channel, as well as Raw Select Radio, which is a bit more of like a DJ radio show where you can hear records that I talk about on this channel as well as a whole slew of other records that I have in my collection that I don't always get a chance to talk about. Links for everything as always down in the description. So that's going to be it for me today guys. Thanks as always for watching and I will catch you in the next video. So until then, peace out!